I'm Aaron Batchelor. And I'm Brianna Batchelor. And I had the privilege of marrying the great granddaughter of our founding pastor, Guy E. Rome. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about great grandma and great grandpa, Rome, come from your memories. Well, I'm so thankful that I've had them in my life and I was able to get to know them. Um, my grandpa, great grandpa, died when I was 11, but I just always remembered him as so loving and kind and comforting and encouraging. Um, he could light up the room when he'd come in with that big old smile of his. Oh. And his laugh, you just oh, you can't forget it. And, um, and Grandma, she could cook up a house, man. She could lay out the spread and make you feel so at home. No matter who you were, she'd make you feel like family. She loved everyone, and he loved everyone. They were just so giving. Yeah. You know, they never held back. They were always giving to others, whether financially or whether in need, but also in love and encouragement and being that strength for them that I thought was just so beautiful and such an example yeah. of Christ. I never got to meet him. He passed away in 94, mm -hmm. but I did get to meet great grandma Lily. You did? Yes, I did, unfortunately. And she approved of you. Well, she did, and then we broke up. We <laughs> did. <laughs> then she was sad, but, but I, you know. <laughs> I pray she's looking over the balcony of heaven right now, knowing that I have repented of my ways. Well, and at now least I'm you back. know she approved, but you know, she was a little aggravated. <laughs> she but, was. You know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was. But they were compassionate. They were so she compassionate. She was compassionate. She was and, compassionate. you know, I think you can really see that in the DNA of our church even today. Yes. Is that that love that they had yes. for people, that compassion that they had, it still is found in the body of Christ today. And I know that's because of our roots and where right. we came from. Right. And they she was a, a powerhouse. Foundation. She was quiet. She was like the power behind the throne. Right. Or beside the throne. But I'm telling you. She, she held the family together. She was there encouraging him and backing him up. And, you know, she didn't, when she married him, you know, it's been said before, she didn't marry a minister. You know, so this was when, yeah. when he went into ministry and he felt that calling when they're having that prayer um, meeting in their home. Um, you know, they didn't plan on starting that church. It just wow. kind of organically happened and the Lord led them into that. And she always, you know, think about it. That home, every room was used for service. They would tease about having different congregations, you know, in the yeah. kitchen and in the living room and the dining room. <laughs> but she allowed people in her home and so she was so supportive and yes, she was quiet, but there's some people may not know this, but um, he needed a drummer for a little bit, so she played the drums. <laughs> yeah, she played the drums. She played the drums. <laughs> so that was one way my dad got me to play the drums when we started our home missions church. It's like, you know, your great grandma helped your grandpa out by playing those drums. Wow. So I just thought that was neat how she tried to do whatever she could, you know, to help, even though she may have felt a little yeah. unqualified or intimidated by it all, but she was with him on that, um, having that faith and that passion yeah. to see, you know, souls saved. Yeah, so involved yeah. in a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know I couldn't do this without you, and I see mm -hmm. that kind of generational yeah. um, quality yeah. of, of being involved and being a part of it. You've told me before a little bit, but um, you're it's speaking of generations, mm -hmm. uh, the, the generations that you've been, I think you've got a picture here of the generations. I do. That, so this is a generational picture right here. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is my great grandma, great, great, great grandma, great, great -grandma. Lena Faye Rome, yeah. Guy Edward Rome, my grandma Lily, which is Brother Rome's daughter, Lily May, my dad Dwayne Preston, oh, my and then of course and me. And the cutie right there. Yes, Brianna Preston. Not, not, not super happy right now no, because, I'm you know. Hungry. You're hungry, Ty. Very hungry. Yeah. But you're, you've told me this before, but uh, great grandpa really took a lot of time, especially even with your brother Jonathan. Yes. And with you. Yeah, he really had a connection with my brother. He yeah. was a lot older, and so um, he had free time since Brother Jones was pastoring. And so my brother would be in the nursery and boohooing and crying at preschool. And my brother learned that if he did that, grandpa would come get him. And Grandpa would bring him over into the office and give him candy and take him home to eat with Grandma. And um, he was just so, he just loved spending time with his yeah. family. And since he had more time, we uh, 
it was wonderful for us to have that opportunity to get spoiled by him. Yeah, for To have sure. those moments of conversation and him just, uh, you know, he was older, so he was tired, so he didn't get out playing ball with us, but it was just the stories and just being there with us yeah. and having those moments and taking those places that... Well, I think know, that's really special. Steak and Shake was his favorite, so... I loved going with him to Steak and Shake because I always got the big old chocolate shake. You remember those? With yes, the and they got the cookie the on top cookie. of that. Yes, yes. So loved going to get our chili and our, our yes. shake. That was our thing. <laughs> well, I think sure. that's kind of neat that he spent time, you know, with his great grandkids, yes. even though yeah. he had this, uh, at that time, I mean, the church had grown large mm -hmm. and uh, lots of ministries and very busy. Right. And yet he took time. Yeah. And again, yeah. I can see that even in the DNA of the church, yeah. this uh, this love for family. Yeah. And I see that uh, as a staple at New Life is that we believe in families. Right. And we believe in our children. We believe right. in the next generation. And I think a lot of that came from your... Uh, yeah. Great grandma and grandpa who yeah. put so much uh, yeah. into this church. They did. They did. They poured so much into so many lives. And, uh, you know, you hear stories. I hear people tell me, you know, at different events or here even in this church, you know, um, telling me how grandpa and grandma impacted them and yeah. how he would, you know, they'd be playing outside, um, you know, baseball and he would walk outdoors from his office and roll up his sleeves. Get a bat and a ball and play, you know, play right with them. He he loved the young people and he loved children and he just loved families in general. But he just invested every moment that he could to let people know that he loved them. Yeah, I think it's safe to say because, he just loved yeah, people. Yeah, he loved because God loved him so much that he wanted to be able to show that love to others when they may have not, you know, and they've never forgotten it. Yeah. If you talk to them, you know, they may not, you know, be even attending church, mm -hmm. but I can guarantee, and I know they have told me themselves, they have never forgotten his love. Oh, he made he a tremendous sincere. impact. He was sincere. He was, he was, he was, yeah, he was sincere. He was, there was no facade about him. It was authentic. Yeah. Authentic love and care. And, uh, yeah, it's, he was the real deal, and so was Grandma. Yeah, what does this mean to you that you get the opportunity to help pastor a church that your great-grandpa started? It's the greatest honor that I could ever have to be able to um, have the faith that he had, and to be the dreamer that he was, um, to carry on the vision that he had for this city. Um, it's my heartbeat. And um, never thought as a little girl, being the shy, little, timid thing that I was, and um, that he dedicated me to the Lord. He baptized me in Jesus' name, and he believed in me. And um, even Grandma, she always believed in me. And I just never thought that I would be able to pick up that mantle and to walk with you hand in hand to lead this church to greater things because there's dreams that have not been yet fulfilled and there's promises that's not been yet fulfilled that's been made that I know to to my grandpa from the Lord that we will see come to pass yes. and yeah. um, I'm just so thankful that I get to be a part of it yeah. and to have this legacy and um, had n never believed that I would have yeah yeah. Be where I am today. Well, I remember uh, youth rallies yeah. and services that would be here, uh, yeah. packed out. Well, I was dedicated here. Yes. Received the Holy Ghost downstairs under Brother Squire's leadership, Sister yes. Squire's, which I absolutely love. They were like our children's pastor, you know, and like I said, baptized and went to school here all the way through high school. Yeah. Graduated. Saw you here for the first time. We got married here. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I graduated from Bible college. Our graduation was here. Yeah, saying my first solos here. I mean, yeah. there's so many firsts that were here growing up, you know, and under you know, the leadership of my grandpa and Uncle Jim and Brother Jones. And and then we started the church out in Warrington when Bishop was pastoring. But then we got to come back yeah. and youth pastor under his yeah. great leadership. So it's just... Yeah, it's amazing. Kind of amazing how God brings it full circle yeah. for us. And you were speaking a little bit about your uh, grandpa being a visionary. Visionary, big visionary. And he was. Big dreamer. Big dreamer. He I had mean, such faith. Just seeing where this church started from yeah. their home. Yeah. And I think people were attracted to that yeah. because they saw what God was wanting to do in St. Right. Louis, what they wanted God to do in their lives. 
and your yeah. grandma and grandpa just led the way. Yeah, he just that. had so much faith in God that it didn't matter what the finances look like. Yeah. He knew that if God gave him the dream, that God would fulfill it, mm -hmm. that God would work. And you see, like by this building, they did not have everything in order for their finances, yeah. but he stepped out by faith. And people, like you said, got behind that faith and vision and dream and came together as a body yes. in one mind and one accord. And look what that look what that did. It, this church building is still standing. Exactly. Because of the hands of people that had, you know, caught the vision and the dream yeah. to reach the city. Yeah. And they built this building in their, you know, own time. Exactly. You know, free well, time you've had. had several decades you know, of experiences and mm -hmm. uh, life here at this church in this yeah. location uh, until your parents were sent out and they started a church right. in Warrington. Warrington but right. how would you say, just in your estimation, how would you say uh, the culture or the worship or uh, new life has changed uh, since, since those days whenever you remember uh, being here? Now, I could say one of the things that have changed is the carpet. The carpet has the changed. Carpet has changed. Yeah, the carpet has changed. Thank the Lord. Yes. It's gone through several changes. The orange changes. carpet is left. The blue pews are gone. Well, we picked up the orange the carpet. We found a red carpet. dark brown paneling is gone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because it was very, yeah, uh, and the stained glass is no longer seen in the sanctuary. That's right. So a lot has changed. We'll bring it back one day. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come back, but that's one day changed. It may. Yes. It may. You never know. <laughs> so in the year of 2014, um, we were youth pastor in here at New Life, and uh, I was at home with the children, praying over their lunch. And all of a sudden, the presence of the Lord just moved in in such a powerful way yeah. that I just went into worshiping and praising Him, and then felt an urgency to go pray. And I went into our bedroom, found a corner, and began just to pray, and uh, and just started interceding. And I didn't really know exactly what I was interceding for. I was just speaking in tongues, and the power of the Lord was there, so beautiful. And all of a sudden, the Lord just hushed me, and he asked me a question. And he said, what do you see? And I'm like, I'm in the corner of the wall. What do you mean, what do I see? <laughs> and he's like, what do you see? And it, all of a sudden, it was just like someone had taken blinders off, and I could see our church, and I saw people parking up on that hill, and people like walking up the hill trying to get into the church. And as I was walking, I was literally trying to get past people and um, and as I'm seeing it, I'm speaking it. It's just wild. It's like it's just flowing, and I'm trying to get through. And the foyer's so full, like you couldn't even get in. You know, yeah. I'm trying to shove my way through the door. And as I'm getting to the double doors of the church uh, into the sanctuary, there is just a line of people, and they're getting prayed for. And there's just a group of ministers up there. And it wasn't just like a pastor and his wife. It was a church a body that was together yeah. unifying in prayer and miracles were happening and I could see angels on the side of the sanctuary and I looked around and the whole balcony was full and people were sitting on the steps and people are just piled and there was such a beautiful presence of God and when I saw that I just knew the Lord was speaking to me this is what you're going to see happen and you got to stand on the spot. This was before we knew yeah. that we were going to pastor in right, life. Right. This happened in 2014, I believe in October. And in December, Bishop talked to you right. about pastoring. And it was like the Lord was already giving me the burden and the vision. Yeah, we had no idea. Before we even knew mm -hmm. what God was orchestrating our steps. Yeah, to he was already tying us in to that. Right, and had that you know, uh, vision and burden of what one, God wanted to do in this city and how it was going to overflow. And I saw backsliders. I remember just in that moment and speaking, just seeing backsliders come. And I know, you know, as we are moving forward, God just keeps telling me, you know, that this church was based off prayer. Yeah. And for us to move forward as a church and as a yeah. body, it is going to start with prayer. That old fashioned yes. kneeling down prayer and fasting. Yeah. And when we do that, as we come together, we are going to see things happen like we've never seen before. Backsliders will come home. Yes. The prodigals are coming home. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> the revival, the church rather, started in a home, in a prayer meeting. In a prayer meeting. In a prayer meeting. And as we've seen, mighty revivals that have swept the world over have always started in a prayer meeting. Yeah. And so that's going to continue to happen. Right. And that vision that God showed you, and that's why I say that I feel like you've got that visionary uh, gifting 
uh, like your great grandpa had. But that vision is larger right. than both of us. And for God to allow us to come into this is such a high honor right. to be able to serve. But right. it's bigger than just you and me. That's right. Whenever I'm looking through the history, after 75 years of New yeah. Life St. Louis being in existence, it has taken men and women of every race, of every culture, right. of every age, and brought them together. And if you're watching this right now, God is calling people yeah. right now to join with us here in St. Louis yes. in order for his vision to come to pass. It's bigger yeah. than us. There is a greater you. revival. Yeah. We need you. Yeah, we need you. And we tell that to people in our Next Steps class all the time, right. that this church is incomplete right. without you. Yes. We need people's giftings. We need people's callings. Right. We need their prayer. Right. And God is bringing us together like never before as the church right. in order to see his vision come, come fast, to pass. Yeah. And yeah. so the, I know that God is raising up yeah. apostolics. He's raising up apostles, prophets, evangelists, yeah. pastors, teachers. Yeah. So your age, your past, your history, your pedigree right. has nothing to do with it. It is your faith right now yeah. and your willingness yeah. to say yes to God like a couple did 75 right. years ago in their home, yeah. as young as they were, yeah. but they just simply said yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And if you and I will say yes right now to what God is speaking yeah. and calling you to do, we're going to be able to see greater things than we have ever imagined right. or ever dreamed greatest because revival. we serve a yeah. great God. The yeah greatest revival. Yeah, greatest it is revival. yet to come and it is going to happen yeah. as we say yes. yes. It has been an mm -hmm. honor. I know yeah. it's been an honor for us to serve and yeah. to pastor this church. I love New Life. We love I New love Life and our life. family of New Life St. Louis yes. and we cannot wait to see what God is going to I'm do so excited. in the next 75 I'm, years. That's right. See great things.